Hey guys and welcome back to my channel, I'm Cora. Today we're going to be working on a table makeover. We're going to be giving it a marble effect using two different techniques. The first technique that I'm going to be showing you is going to be using paints. You basically just need a couple of different acrylic paints in the colors that you want, whatever color scheme you're going for. If you want the whites and gray color, like type of a stone you can go that if you want darker shades of blacks and grays or if you want brown tones whatever pick whatever colors you want and then also pick up a little thing of epoxy because you will want to seal it with epoxy now that's for the hand painting technique another technique that we are going to try is what is called the epoxy pour and it's where you basically take these different pigments that you can get you make a clear batch of your epoxy and then you can pour it into different batches and mixing it up getting different colors and then we're going to just basically pour our epoxy to get a marble effect. No, it sounds simple but it really was that easy. Anyways, so we're going to get started and the most important thing is that you start with a very good primer. My favorite primer is this gripper primer and then you can get it tinted in any color you like. I like to start with grays so I started with my gray primer here and then we're going to start with our technique number one which is hand painting. So stay tuned if you want to go ahead and skip ahead here are the timestamps. For the first technique, you're just going to want the acrylic paints of your color choices. I like to use the lighter colors, so whites and grays are what I'm going for here. And then you'll want a little bit of water and like a dry, big, wide brush and possibly a roller. Now again, start with some good primer. I also do recommend getting any kind of metallic colors if you like there's like champagne or silvers and stuff like that in these colors because they do give it a nice pop and a little bit of dimension once you add your epoxy. So those are great as you can see the sheen there. And now and you're going to use a lot of white washing in this one which is where you just dilute your paint with water. So anytime you see me using this white paint, I'm literally just using a white wash which is a very thin, 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 like very diluted wash of white paint and water. And that's because every time I do a little bit of this white wash over something I've already done, it's going to leave a little bit of a translucency to it so that you can still see what I've done underneath. So it's basically how I'm going to develop layers to give it the marble effect so that you can see where it looks like there's possible veins and lining and grooves and grains and everything going underneath and it looks like it's layered up. So again, it's just a little thin whitewash of diluted paint. Next, I'm going to take some different colors, like I think I started here with like one of the grays or zinc color or something like that, and I'm just kind of swashing it on. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to use my brush to just kind of slosh it out. You can use a bottle of water if you want to keep it kind of wet so it'll smear easily if you find that it is starting to dry before you get to it, before you start the smearing part. So that's why you'll see every now and then I'll come and just kind of spray it to keep it damp. Now, there is no technique to this. I am just swashing back and forth, just kind of smooshing, 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 and really trying to blend those harsh straight lines that I got when I just kind of dabbed on those different colors. So then again, here's some more of that whitewash, and I'm just kind of drawing some lines in. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of going for it. I didn't have any kind of a direction or a pattern or anything that I was going for. I'm literally just winging this, you guys. So I'm doing just layers and layers and layers of these just kind of washing back and forth these different colors and it's coming out pretty cool. Next I'm just going through and I'm adding some more vein type looks. You can just add darker colors, add a little bit of water, and then smudge it out to blend out those harsh lines again. And the beauty of this is that when you're working with paint, it's much easier that if you make a mistake, you can cover it back up by just kind of covering over your last layer and it's kind of like restarting. So like I liked how this was looking and I don't know why, but I decided to come back in and add some more veins afterwards. And as you'll see here, I didn't quite like how dark they came out. So I decided that I was going to kind of cover them, fix them and try to get back to this look here. So you'll see that all go down in just a moment. But like I said, the beauty in that is just adding some more of that whitewash or that white and just kind of blending it out and covering it back up if you make any mistakes. Simple enough.
Now as you can see it took a little bit of effort but I was able to get back to the original palette that I kind of liked before I added those darker veins. So if you do mess up you can fix it. As you can see it's kind of back to the way that I had it before. Now the next step here is going to be that I'm going to want to add in some kind of little natural looking veins just to break it up and to give it a more natural realistic stone look because realistically stones are not perfect. So here is what I'm starting with. It's a little bit wet and damp, so do let it dry. Or if you're afraid you're going to mess up on the veins, do it while it's wet, and then you can kind of just dab it out and break it up then. But you can always just keep that spray bottle on hand if you want, because it does kind of loosen up that acrylic for you. Just go in with a thin little brush and just add them wherever you want and then take like a sponge or something and kind of dab out and break up those lines you can add some white or gray or whatever the color tones that you're going with go with one of your lighter shades to kind of give you some shadows and highlights and everything to really add that dimension and break up those lines because you don't want it to look like hand painted lines you want it to look like real veins underneath layers and layers of real stone so again breaking it up and then you can go in afterwards and add any type of a clear coat to seal it in or epoxy if you're going to use epoxy now another big question that i get asked a lot is do you need to seal in this work with a polycrylic before using epoxy and no you do not I do this sometimes if I know that I'm not going to be able to lay epoxy down right away and I'm worried that my work may get messed up, meaning my kids might forget and set a drink down on it or my cat might jump up, who knows with what on the bottom of his paws and mess up my work. So you may seal it in if, for temporary purposes if you know that you're not going to be able to lay the epoxy immediately. However, if you are going to be able to just go ahead and apply the epoxy, you can skip the step, the step of the polycrylic. You do not need to add it. This is the polycrylic that I do like to use, and if you do add it underneath, it will not affect the epoxy that goes on over. So it doesn't matter if you add it or if you do not, it does not affect it in either way. One does not require the other, and yeah, so this is how it came out with just the polycrylic, and as you can see, it's grainy, so that's why I like to add epoxy. Now moving on to technique number two. For our second technique, we're going to be needing a few supplies. You'll want to get whatever the epoxy is that you're going to use, but also while you're picking up your epoxy, say you go to Hobby Lobby, look and see if in their epoxy aisle you can find these pearl type pigments that you can add into the epoxy. And you can also add acrylic colors into epoxy as well. As you see, I'll be adding white into one of mine. That's just a simple acrylic white paint. You can also use acrylic silvers and metallic silvers and stuff like that that are acrylic also. You'll need a torch of some sort. You'll need gloves in a plastic like bin to kind of mix it in. You'll also need plastic everywhere to protect everything and also some glitter if you'd like for a little dimension later. I do recommend getting a roller brush for this one because most of the work that I'm going to be doing is going to be done with a little roller. You could pick up a squeegee but I didn't really use the squeegee as much. I found it more difficult to spread with the squeegee than with the roller so I actually ended up kind of dropping that and went with that. Now to mix your pigments in you're going to want to separate them into different containers because obviously you don't want to mix your colors but you just go ahead and put a little bit of the pigment in before you mix your epoxy so that way when you pour your epoxy into it you can go ahead and start stirring and it doesn't it's not sitting and getting hard before you add your pigment into it if you left your epoxy just sit there in such small quantities it will start to kind of harden and cure before you get it in there so that's why I went ahead and I pre-added you can mix some of these pigments with paint also so I added like uh, one of my white paints I added some of the pearl pigment to give it a pearly white look now when it comes to epoxy you have two parts a and B and it is crucial that you put equal and even amounts of parts a and part B it is a one-to-one -one ratio if you do not and you fail to mix it properly it will be sticky gooey gunky and it will not dry ever it just sits there sticky and you'll be like why isn't this curing all right but once you mix that up really really well you can go ahead and start adding it into your different shades or different pigments or colors that you're going for do not add anything into the main portion of your epoxy until you've decided that you're done and you have enough 
like you see here I'm adding white into the main part because the majority of my base color is going to be white epoxy so only the majority one will you want to add color to so I just started with a clear batch first mixed it into all of my different colors here as you can see there was the silver the pearl this is the gold which you'll see later I didn't add enough and I'll go back and add more and then my white pearl one which I liked so I added some more pearl into my big white container you're going to start with just doing a basic pour of your white epoxy again that was just clear epoxy mixed with a little bit of white acrylic paint and spread now here I'm using the squeegee but it was kind of just more of a pain than it was helpful so after I got it somewhat spread out I opted to just switch to the roller and I found that to be much easier so if you want to just skip the squeegee altogether go straight to a roller just focus on pouring when you're pouring the epoxy just pour it so it's nice and even and it makes it easier for spreading because really that's the only thing that this is for here so once you're done and you've got the white base spread you can go in and start adding different colors and begin developing your veins and your layers after the white base coat is down, I just start going in and I take the silver and I'm just dragging it across to try to get some look, vein looking lines. You don't want to start with your lines in the middle of your table because you'll just get a blop of your color. So you'll want to start on the ends and work across from one side all the way to the other, going in different directions and then use different pigments. So I'm layering and I'm going over what I just did with different colors. Now the point of the gold is that once it's layered underneath it kind of gives almost like a rusted out or corroded corrosion type effect to like a natural stone that you would see after layers and layers of the elements and time and everything that's kind of warped it so that's the kind of effect I'm going for here it's just obviously I'm trying to fake it so I'm just going over and over from different angles and then I'll take out my little roller and roll over it. It's really that simple guys. You just keep doing it in layers until you get the look you're going for. I didn't like so much of the gold showing so once I went over it I went back over with some more of the white, that pearl white, and I tried to cover it up a bit before I started rolling and so then once I started rolling it really did kind of cover up that gold as you'll see here in a minute. As you're using your roller and you're pushing your epoxy back and forth I just want to make note of being mindful of your surrounding area as you can see I have a shelving unit behind me and there are things in front of me and I'm trying to move slowly on this roller so that it doesn't sling the epoxy off the ends because this stuff is really thick like molasses and it does a sling everywhere and you do not want to make a huge mess of it that's the only con I would say to working with epoxy is that it's very sticky very messy and you kind of have to you spend more time in prep than you actually do preparing this particular project took me exactly 12 minutes from start to finish to get this desired look going from when I started laying out my epoxy to rolling adding veins and finishing and letting it dry 12 minutes it took me longer to wrap and prep the table and the area all around and get my gloves and all of that ready so it really is important the prep work but it's worth it in the end but as you can see here I'm just kind of going back through and I'm adding some more colors in the silver now this particular silver I did have an issue with later which I'll show you but for some reason of all the pigments they did fine but this one had a chemical reaction with the epoxy and it didn't quite cure like it was supposed to it kind of kept showing up through the layers like it would it was almost like it created a tacky under layer so I didn't know that until later and after my I let, let this coat dry and so because of that I ended up going back later and adding one clear coat of epoxy over it to kind of correct that mistake so I wanted to let you guys know that ahead of time and I'll show you the way the silver looked it was like drying faster than everything else so it was squeezing and pinching up my epoxy and causing it to create dimples 
in the texture, which normally when you're using epoxy, it self levels and it gives you this really smooth glass like finish. Well, that just wasn't happening and I couldn't figure out why. Well, when I went to look and investigate, I found that the container of my pre-mixed epoxy with that silver pigment in it had turned almost into this like spongy, weird, really hot concoction of a science experiment. Like it was hurting me to hold. It was that hot. that I could literally feel the heat coming from it. It was just some weird chemical reaction going on. So I ended up carefully trashing that, making sure it was like sealed up so it wouldn't combust. But I recommend maybe using a silver metallic or a silver metallic like acrylic type paint instead of a pigment maybe but the other ones the pearl one did beautifully and the Inca gold was more of like a brassy gold in my opinion um, I would have rather it been more of a true gold but I think it maybe if I added more it would have really changed it so the amount of powder or pigment that you do add will kind of give it a stronger look if you do don't put enough it gives it kind of a dull translucent look but if you add more of the pigment it really saturates it and makes it extremely bold and, and bright so just a little heads up for you guys now after I've rolled several times I'm going back in as you see here with those different white um, epoxy mixes because I wanted to get not only dark colored veins but you'll notice in real stones you'll notice that there's light veins also and that was something that I thought just really kind of added that depth to it um, now I here you'll see I kind of swirled it around I don't recommend getting those rounded edges into it I probably should have just gone straight over in the end but I was able to smooth it out and fix it there right there towards the end right there where my brush is going um, it took a little bit of work but I smudged it out but like here where I'm going from one end all the way across to the other that's the better technique So at this point I hadn't figured out yet that the metallic silver color was starting to affect the epoxy and that it wasn't drying or curing properly and was creating some sort of a chemical reaction. And in a couple minutes I'll show you how that looked. It gave it like this spongy type of a texture and even now I've noticed that even a several days later even after a clear coat that it's still starting to affect through that clear coat. So again I would avoid using that pigmented silver metallic pearl. That I got and I would go with a silver acrylic paint instead because it will still give you that same metallic sheen but without causing this weird chemical reaction that again I just did not realize was happening until after I let this coat of epoxy cure so yeah check that out in a couple minutes and you'll be able to see up close what it was doing now if you're doing this on your countertops, you may want to work in sections because of time constraints. For instance, you may want to do like your island section separate from like a high top bar or a low top bar or even your six foot or three foot, whatever sections you have, you may want to just work in parts if you can. When you're laying this epoxy and you're doing your little drips and pours and veins and everything, I want you to keep in mind that you have an overall time limit of between 10 and 20 minutes to really lay this down and maneuver it before it starts to get a little bit tacky. So I'm kind of going through and I'm doing all of this really quickly and I'm just, that roller really was what kind of gave it life. Once you added something and you went over the roller and it broke up those lines, it gave it those like jagged natural looking edges and then you can just kind of keep adding veins and keep going until you get the desired look that you're going for. So once you do get to the look that you're going for, you just kind of want to leave it alone and let it dry. Make sure that your edges though, you keep coming back to and smoothing those so you don't get like those drippy droplet little teardrops on the bottom which will give your edges texture and then will be a dead giveaway that this is not a real stone slab so again just once you're done putting it come back every maybe three or four minutes and just smooth over your edges and then after it is completely dry you should have a nice finished glass looking marble looking table and then if you see here this is what was happening to that silver color how it kind of turned spongy and thick and just really was having some sort of strange chemical reaction. I'm not sure, but I don't recommend that one. You can add a little bit of a glitter if you want at the end. I like to do translucent colors or very silver colors and very, very fine, small powdered or glittery specks. You can get them at like the Dollar Tree and really fine um, small sizes. 
So just kind of loosely put that over there so you don't get big globs and then it is time to get the bubbles out. So while this is drying, you'll want to get a torch and go over it. Now what I do is I wait about 10 minutes to allow it to set, kind of self level and let the bubbles that are in there naturally rise up to the top. And then you'll go through with this torch very gently, keeping it quite a distance, but close enough that you, the heat is touching it and popping the bubbles, but not too close that it starts to create or ignite the flame because the epoxy is flammable and sometimes it'll just kind of go poof into a little flame ball and then it'll go out. But what you can do is like that, what you can do is just keep a perfect, a good distance away and keep your torch kind of down at the right angle instead of bending it or flipping it upside down and that will help keep the flame going. But as you can see here, it is like a glass-like smooth finish and it would have been my last step here had it not been for that weird metallic-y thing that was happening and once this dried I noticed that it had dimples just where those silver lines and stuff were so I just went back over it with the clear coat of epoxy um, to give it that like finish. Same thing goes with the clear coat of epoxy. If you do decide to add one final clear coat to the top, you just mix it with equal parts, which is always crucial, and spread it out pretty evenly, and then allow it to self-level. Um, and then you are going to, again, wanna come back every few minutes and work on those edges. Now, before it completely dries, pull off and take the tape away from your edges so that the tape does not dry underneath the epoxy. So. Um, after this has gotten about 10 or 20 minutes in and I've come back and I've popped all the bubbles with the torch, I'll also remove the tape and the plastic from the barrier or the border to prevent it from drying underneath the epoxy. But you do want to make sure that you're checking those edges so that nothing else drips below or ruins any of your surfaces. Now you can use either of these techniques on your countertops, tabletops, bar tops, or even furniture if you have like a dresser or a side table, or even your end tables or a coffee table. Now that is it on this one guys. I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial with the two different techniques and ways to get a marble looking table using paint and epoxy. Personally I found the epoxy pour to be extremely easy, saved me so much time, and was actually I would say the better outlook. I think it looked more realistic rather than the other hand-painted one, but the hand-painted one was more foolproof. That way if you do make a mistake, you can just kind of paint over it, which I guess essentially you could do the same thing here with the epoxy one. It's just epoxy is a little bit more expensive than paint. So to do layers and layers of epoxy would get a little bit more costly. However, it would look beautiful. I can't deny that. Thanks for watching my video, you guys. I hope you check out some more of my other videos on my channel. If you want to see some of the granite looking rather than marble, you can check out my granite tutorials. There's also some cost comparisons on how to do it with acrylics versus the epoxy versus like the Gianni granite kits that you can buy at home, etc. There's also some other home makeover videos from different rooms and projects that I've been working on. But for now, that is all that I have for you today. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.